okay we're going to get here on number two in regards towards people's uh people's dna and and uh the things that they're talking about here um that i find very interesting um and some of the facts that they present on the show and then again some of the stuff that they present is nothing more than just theory so you know we have the right to listen debate question understand believe and act upon that belief or we can dismiss it towards it being just a bunch of junk one or the other i found it to be interesting because some of the th things that they're talking about are, in fact, factual, especially when it comes to our blood type, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and the historical findings that we've found upon to the planet in the past. research about DNA lately. I was talking to Gary Nolan, who's a very well-known geneticist at Stanford, and he was telling me that they realized that every 600,000 years, DNA doubles in complexity. So they kept going back to the very first time mm -hmm. where it started, where it couldn't double anymore, and that was nine billion years ago. They're saying that our DNA started nine billion years ago. And Earth is how old? Four and a half billion. Four and a half. Maybe so five. how could our DNA is twice as old as exactly. the Earth? So it didn't come from Earth then. And I think we need to talk about Francis Crick for a moment yes. too, because even Crick himself believed that there was some kind of an intervention. Yeah. Two decades after discovering the structure of DNA in 1953, Francis Crick made a statement that shocked the scientific world. He had come to the conclusion that human DNA was far too complex to have evolved over the 4.5 billion year history of planet Earth. Francis Crick wrote and promoted the idea that it was possible that DNA may have been seeded on this planet from another star system in a process known as directed panspermia. Francis Crick comes up, of course, with the idea of directed panspermia as an explanation of an extraterrestrial civilization that shoots DNA, loads it up on a rocket, shoots it out into space, and this is the origin of human DNA. So this is Francis Crick himself. The man who discovered DNA exactly. won the Nobel Prize for it. You don't get a greater authority than that. Right. He said it was impossible that this could have happened spontaneously. So, but are you talking about intervention yes. in the middle of the evolution or from the very beginning? Both. It's it starting as a right. In my opinion, someone changed the genetic makeup in the humanoid species. I'm glad you brought that up, Giorgio, because geneticists have discovered other types of hominins in our DNA, Denisovans and, and others. In recent years, new discoveries in genetic research have profoundly altered the timeline of human evolution. When you look at the evolution of humanity and the different species that have existed throughout time, early on we had a pretty simple story. We, we started with our ancestors, we split from chimpanzees and monkeys, the homo sapien ancestors developed, and what confuses the story is, as we do more research in archaeology, we're discovering a wide range of different hominids. Before modern humans occupied the Eurasian continent, there were two so-called archaic humans existing there. To the west and the central area, we had the Neanderthals. But from the central to the eastern part of the continent, we had the so-called Denisovans, and that there are a number of others. Given the great diversity of the number of different species, how is it that Homo sapiens ended up the only one left? Scientists now believe that dating back as much as 40,000 years ago, at least eight human-like species existed on Earth at the same time. The discovery could be that 
The evolution of the humanoid primate on this planet is because of the genetic manipulation of extraterrestrial biological entities using this planet Earth like a laboratory. This would suggest that some type of experimentation has been going on because why would there all of a sudden be these brand new species that come along and then suddenly disappear again? So the mystery deepens because at first we thought based on Darwin that because we came from primates that we must also have 48 chromosomes just like the primates. And then they discovered that that's not true, that humans have 46 chromosomes, 23 pairs. And that became a big mystery. What, what happened to the other two? One principle that biologists generally agree on is that species which are closely related usually have the same number of chromosomes. Chromosomes are long physical molecules that consist of a DNA strand. And when we talk about the genome, we're talking primarily about the DNA stored in the chromosomes. The idea of, of evolution um, by descent and cop hold, uh, it was assumed traits would be shared between humans and other primates because of our common ancestry. So when it was discovered that humans actually have 46 chromosomes, that was surprising. Some researchers believe that these missing chromosomes may hold the key to what causes human beings to behave differently and demonstrate higher intelligence than other species on Earth. We broke away from a common primate ancestor that we shared with chimpanzees and other types of ape. And what's so significant is that this brain seemed to change the amount of chromosomes that were in our cells. In 2005, a team of scientists discovered that two chromosomes in the ape genome appear to have fused together to create a single larger chromosome in humans called chromosome 2. In their own terms, this is what they say, this is not natural. This is not the product of evolution. Something intervened to fuse these two chromosomes. So was that an upgrade? You can call that an upgrade? Absolutely. Like what CRISPR can do now, we can alter and edit DNA so then it's passed on to future generations. So, But the point is that this is what defines us as humans, and it is a definitely an intervention. It's an upgrade. So essentially, we weren't necessarily created from scratch, but built upon and added from that which was already there. This is why I'm asking the questions, because I'm looking at ancient patterns, and we're seeing modern patterns. We're going through this right now. Stay tuned for bonus footage when ancient aliens declassified. The intervention that they're thinking about that happened was whenever God created Adam and Eve and the chromosomes was different. But there was still primitive ancient life here that the chromosomes was of the same in the melting pot era between I guess 400 years ago beginning 400 plus years ago or maybe even longer the races started intertwining running with out. each other and as they intertwined with each other their genes melted in with each other's genes pertaining to the 12 tribes into the lost tribe into the lost link the the uh, the tribe that the 13th tribe that had not been discussed it all matches with the Bible and like I said a while ago you can call them aliens you can call them flying saucers you can call them Martians. Uh, the bottom line is this. We are not alone. We've never been alone. Uh, there's things beyond the human capacity towards what we... Sh what, what, if we could see into the spirit world in being in the flesh, we would see all kinds of things floating around, moving around, 
And I ain't talking about germs. I'm talking about real live entities pertaining to either angels or evil demonic spirits. We would see uh, even the heavens differently than what we than what we see them today if we could see supernaturally into the spirit world. Um, they're constantly intertwining with each other, coming down, going up, coming down, going up. And if you don't believe this, then obviously you don't believe that there's a greater life beyond our life. And odds are, I just as well quit talking to you because I just was be talking to a tree. Some of the stuff that they talk about, I, I can relate to. It's very uh, enlightening. But some of the stuff they talk about, I don't agree with because they go too far over the rim, I believe. What all this ultimately speaks to me is that while the time span is vast, hundreds of thousands of years, there seems to be a project that we're the project. Absolutely. And they're aiming us towards an ultimate outcome. Right. I've been working with hundreds of people for the last few years about their abduction experiences and in my experience working with many individuals. The common denominator of the abduction is it has to do with some sort of genetic engineering and genetic combining of the DNA. Throughout the world, thousands of people have reported being abducted by extraterrestrials. While such reports are rarely taken seriously, many researchers suggest that the accounts given by alleged abductees are too similar to dismiss and may reveal an extraterrestrial agenda. The first documented case of a reported alien abduction appeared in the Boston Traveler on October 25th, 1965. According to the account, Betty and Barney Hill were driving through New Hampshire late at night when a large flying saucer rapidly approached them and then hovered over their car. The couple claimed that they'd been taken aboard the craft and were subjected to numerous medical experiments, including both eggs and sperm being taken. What's particularly notable is the fact that during alien abductions, people talk about blood, eggs, semen, cells, DNA taken from their bodies and essentially experimented on by these strange, short, black-eyed entities that have become known as the greys. The people that come to me don't know each other. So they're telling me all these different stories that are actually strikingly similar. Most of the time, extraterrestrials are doing some sort of genetic manipulation, taking eggs from the female or sperm, if it's a, a male. Or well, sometimes these children and, as fetuses disappear from the mother, don't they? And they're suddenly gone? Yes. There, there, there are cases like that, right? Exactly. So these are kind of medical mysteries, anomalies. One of the most shocking and disturbing accounts of extraterrestrial abduction involved a Las Vegas couple, Diane Swanson and Brett Oldham, in 1987. At the time, Diane was almost four months pregnant with her first child. We were asleep, and then, I don't know what time it was, but I was woken up, and I sat up. Our bedroom door was open, and there were these three entities looking over the door, so I thought it was a dream. And, and you know how you're so scared, you just go... <gasps> And then it went black. And then I woke up and I was on this ice cold metal bed. And then it was, I was strapped down, but I couldn't move. And then that's when I realized they were doing something to me. And I remember just calling, just saying, please, please don't, don't take my baby, don't hurt us. I woke up the next morning in my own bed and I was covered in blood. Brett rushed me to my doctor's office and he took us in right away and uh, he thought I had miscarried, but he wasn't sure. He gave me an examination and he was very perplexed. He told us that there was no evidence of me ever being pregnant. And he said that was crazy because 
He had just saw me the week before. The sudden disappearance of the four-month-old fetus baffled many in the medical community. What you have here is a ultrasound image of a three-month fetus, and this fetus here is lying on its back, and if you measure what we call crown rump length, and that would be the longest distance from the head to the rump, this area here, this is approximately about five to six centimeters, which is about the diameter of a baseball. So could the body absorb this fetus overnight? That's very unlikely. Is it possible, as Diane claims, that her unborn child was taken by extraterrestrials? And if so, what would be the purpose? I believe they took my child that night. I believe it with all my heart that they took my child. I believe that they're testing on us. I believe that they are. And I wonder sometimes, do they have some kind of plan for that baby? Some researchers suggest that Diane's story, when considered alongside the many strikingly similar accounts of abductees being subjected to medical experiments, may provide evidence of an extraterrestrial agenda. We believe that they are uh, creating hybrids on craft that they began with the greys and they combined human genetics through some kind of gene splicing. When I say hybrids, I mean that the genetic material has been altered and upgraded, and perhaps some of the ET's genetic material has been inserted. From these children who you say have been yeah. taken and they're the hybrids, have we identified any of them that we can look at? Yes, I've been doing a lot of research in that field. I mean, I've been working with so many children that seem to have special abilities. So I believe that there are extraterrestrial uh, species that are upgrading the DNA. Stay tuned for bonus footage when Ancient Aliens Declassified return. A lot of this stuff, <clears throat> you have to have a real good imagination to believe towards people being subjected to various life forms that have been experimented with. In one way, I do agree that we are all one big experiment that has been put here because it talks about in the first three chapters of Revelations, for he has not yet found our works perfect yet. In other words, we go through different levels, different degrees of perfection, and until we actually hit that main core of degree of perfection, God is not going to come back, as the Bible talks comes about, back. towards taking his precious children from this planet and basically creating a mansion that it talks about in the Bible, a new home, and that's where we will reside forever and ever. They can call it aliens if they want to, but the bottom line is this, there is supernatural form beyond our form, but I don't see them as little green men with two big eyes. I see them as angels. I see them as supernatural spirits. I see them as what God had originally designed for them to be. Upgraded. So are, are you saying then that these children have these greater abilities, psychic abilities and, and stuff like that? Right? Exactly. I mean, that's what I believe is happening. Throughout the world, scientists and researchers have been baffled by numerous cases of children who display astonishing and inexplicable extrasensory abilities. Often referred to as star children by ancient astronaut theorists, some researchers suggest they have been genetically modified to possess heightened intuition and even psychic abilities. Star kids are advanced in several departments. These kids 
by and large are much brighter than the uh, old school child of a previous generation. They're using special gifts they have as advanced start kids. For example, in the area of telepathy, they can pick up on things that somebody else is thinking or sensing. In 1982, the Chinese government launched a nationwide search for children with psychic abilities such as telekinesis, telepathy, and clairvoyance. In total, Chinese officials identified more than 1,000 children who possessed what researchers refer to as extra human function. My further study of these incredible abilities reveal, as some ancient astronaut theorists suggest, that they are the result of extraterrestrial manipulation of the human genome. So what is making these children to be alien hybrids? If we looked at their DNA, we would see it would be different than ours? Or is that kind of what you're saying? They would have a normal human DNA plus added information. I believe that part of our DNA has to do with our super sensory uh, abilities. We cannot see those abilities in the normal part of the DNA, uh, but then you look at why certain people can do certain things. I mean, we have people who can move objects with their mind. We have people who can be completely blindfolded and are able to reprogram their brains entirely to be able to see without their eyes and so on and so forth in her 2018 documentary film superhuman the invisible made visible renowned futurist caroline corey investigated a group of children who demonstrate incredible extrasensory capabilities in one segment caroline tested the children's ability to positively identify objects and images while wearing blindfolds that completely block out all light <laughs> Justin, tell me what's on this card. Teacup. And now tell me what's on this card. Oh, tiger. Isabella, what is the shape and color of this stone? Kind of like a circle, and I don't, and it's not really, it's kind of like see through. Evie, tell me the shape and color of the stone. Um, it's red and kind of a circle. Yes. Evie. Tell me what I'm holding in my hand. A wooden spoon. There's a study that was done where scientists were able to demonstrate that DNA is actually receiving information from the external environment. The environment literally is changing the information in the genetic code at a DNA level. All sorts of informational waves are being transmitted into our being. That said, a telepathic communication, for example, could also be a type of wave that we are receiving, even at a DNA level. We could literally be communicating with non-visible, non-physical beings transmitting this information to us through our DNA. I think we are born with these abilities. We're not taught that we have them. How is that possible for a human to all of a sudden be able to do these superhuman things? I think it is because part of our DNA is what's responsible. Perhaps we're being altered genetically in order to advance the race beyond what is transpiring in our world now. Native American legend, there are 13 crystal skulls that are the same size and shape as human skulls. And these crystal skulls were left behind by the earliest ancestors from way back in the mists of time. The skulls are containers of great knowledge, great wisdom, information that is important to mankind. In fact, the legend also prophesies that at a time of great need, all of these crystal skulls will be brought back together again, and that when that happens, they will divulge the knowledge, the wisdom that the Native American elders believe is actually vital to the very survival of the human race. 
The Mitchell Hedges Crystal Skull was considered the Royals Royce of the Crystal Skulls. It was the most beautiful crystal skull. It was discovered in the 1920s by the explorer F.A. Mitchell Hedges in Central America. Mitchell Hedges loaned the Crystal Skull to so scientists at the Hewlett Packard Laboratory back in the 1970s, and they were unable to find any kind of tool marks on it. One of the most interesting things that they discovered was that the crystal skull was not made of just any old bit of crystal, but it was made from a type of crystal known as piezoelectric silicon dioxide. And this is exactly the type of quartz crystal that we now use inside all our information storage devices and all our communication devices. Any quartz crystal object, including our crystal skull, can be encoded with information. And in fact, a quartz crystal can hold more information than a computer chip can. So any crystal object and crystal skulls is, in a sense, a small mini computer storage device. And just a small quartz crystal can hold more computer data than even uh, the largest thumb drive that you're able to buy today. When you think of the legend that said that the crystal skulls were containers of great knowledge, then perhaps if you think how much information we now store inside a tiny silicon crystal chip, then maybe there is vast amounts of information, as the Native American elders say, inside a crystal skull. Mitchell Hedges was told by the locals that this skull was given to them by their ancestors. Now, it was said that their ancestors were the sky people. Now, whenever I hear references to sky people, are we really talking about invisible things that somebody just came up with? Or a being descending from the sky is some type of a flying machine. You want a piece of toast, you gotta slice the bread. But Wonder Bread, this is gonna be the greatest thing since they beat the odds. The Krispy Kreme glaze, something special. To become food icons. Living Hottest was groundbreaking, it was novel, and it was destined to be a success. The Food That Built America, Sunday, February 27th, only on the History Channel. Did you know that the modern calculator is over 350 times faster than the computers on the Apollo 11 space mission? Or that the world's fastest train is also the quietest? Magnets reduce friction so that the train can go really fast. Or even how much concrete it takes to build the Hoover Dam. Enough concrete to make a two-lane highway from San Francisco to New York City. This is how all things are made. Welcome to a world of innovation on Modern Marvels. New episodes starting Wednesday, February 16th at 9 on the History Channel. Why hide your skin if Dupixin has your moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis under control? Hide my skin? Not me. By hitting eczema where it counts, Dupixin helps heal your skin from within, keeping you one step ahead of eczema. Hide my skin? Not me. And that means long-lasting, clearer skin and fast itch relief for adults. With Dupixin, you can show more skin with less eczema. Hide my skin? Not me. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixin. Serious allergic reactions can occur that can be severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems such as eye pain or vision changes, including blurred vision, joint aches and pain, or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines without talking to your doctor. When you help heal your skin from within, you can change how your skin looks and feels. And that's the kind of change you notice. Talk to your eczema specialist about Dupixin, a breakthrough eczema treatment. What is an overpass? Come on. Question, is that an S or a 5? I think it's a 5. I thought so. Ah, uh, frustration loading. Nobody wants more robot tests, but we could all use more ways to save. Star latte for Rob Ott or Rob Ott. Error, human. Switch the Geico for more ways to save. Casper's biannual bedtime sale has arrived. Save up to 50% on supremely supportive mattresses, plush pillows, cozy sheets, and more. Experience better sleep for a lot less. Shop the biannual bedtime sale online at casper.com. Because you're forever connected by love. Two touching center diamonds. Representing the connection you share. The perfect gift to celebrate every kiss. Forever connected. Exclusively at K. If Raina's thinking about retirement, she'll get some help from Fidelity to envision what's possible and balance risk and reward. 
And with a clear plan, Raina can enjoy wherever she's headed next. That's the planning effect from Fidelity. You don't get much time to yourself. So when you do, make it count with Crest Pro Health. It protects the eight areas dentists check for a healthier mouth. The number one toothpaste brand in America, Crest. Making your way in the world today takes everything you've got. Taking a break from all your worries sure would help a lot. Wouldn't you like to get away? genetically in order to advance the race beyond what is transpiring in our world now. I guarantee that's what they're doing with us, to us. I personally think it's to evolve us. What's fascinating to me is that with Darwinian evolution, one thing that's always said is that you need long, long periods of time. Right. And with certain things that we now can see, it doesn't take a long time. Through science, we've learned that somehow, all of a sudden, evolution accelerated exponentially. Scientists believe that human DNA has been evolving for billions of years, making it nearly impossible to trace its trajectory back to its origins. But in 2007, University of Wisconsin professor John Hawkes did a comprehensive analysis of the human genome going back 80,000 years and discovered something astonishing. According to his research, over the past 5,000 years, human DNA has evolved at a rate of approximately 100 times greater than at any previous time during that 80,000 year period. The essential question that remains for Dr. Hawks is, why? Humanity is expanding, is advancing. We are evolving. But is it possible that extraterrestrials may have enhanced our DNA? And the more our own DNA gets enhanced, the more we become like them. So perhaps they are our ancestors. And perhaps that is our destiny. Extraterrestrials genetically engineered the human race thousands of years ago. As ancient astronaut theorists suggest, is it possible that they are continuing to upgrade our DNA, helping us to evolve so that we become like them? So what's the next step then? Is it possible that there's going to be some giant change and, and they're we're preparing being, us for that i think that there's a positive intention behind this and here we are in this age of immense change and transformation we're getting we're right on the verge of migrating into space perhaps they're aiming us towards an ultimate outcome because they want us to ultimately migrate into space and they want us to be more like them i think for those who think that uh, all alien uh, interference or intervention is negative is to block us i think they're so advanced that if they wanted to destroy us they would have done so by now oh absolutely i always embrace this idea that the extraterrestrials mean well mm -hmm. this is a growth an evolution of our race a fulfillment of prophecy or the angelic or extraterrestrial goal. We're part of it, we're living it right now. My friends, I think we've learned a lot, and especially from you, Caroline, this thing that is going on right now, overall illustrates that we are not alone in the universe, we've never been alone in the universe, and some type of experimentation has been going on to usher in a new era. Agreed. And so, I'm looking forward to the future. 
events predicted centuries before they occur. He was able to perceive the rise of Napoleon, the rise of Hitler, atomic weapons dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Objects moved with the power of the mind. Without touching it, I'm able to control it. I hold it over there, I pull so, it back there. Wow. Communications that happen without speaking a word. This thing telepathically communicated with me. And it said, we are here to help you. There are many who believe that the human brain possesses extraordinary untapped abilities given to us by extraterrestrial beings. You have to wonder if ultimately the goal is to activate all the humans on this planet. If true, once we learn to access the full potential of the brain, will we discover a new reality and destiny for humankind? It's possible that extraterrestrial beings are sending messages to assist us in averting a future disaster. There is a doorway in the universe. Beyond it is the promise of truth. It demands we question everything we have ever been taught. The evidence is all around us. The future is right before our eyes. We are not alone. We have never been alone. French King Henry II is mortally wounded while jousting in a tournament. Ten days later, he dies. The news shocks the French people, except for one man. The seer, Michel de Nostradamus. Years earlier, Nostradamus foretold the death of King Henry in La Profitier. A collection of 942 predictions about the future. Now, his macabre vision has been realized with startling clarity. Nostradamus's fame as a prophet starts with the prophecy that King Henry II would die in a jousting accident. He died, as the prophecy said, a cruel death. The reaction to this positively accurate prediction was masses of people burning Nostradamus and Edison. Long after his death in 1566, Nostradamus's most chilling prophecies became known around the world. He's famous today because in 1555 he predicted the rise of Napoleon, of Adolf Hitler, of the death of Princess Diana. Nostradamus is perhaps the most enduring name in post-biblical prophecy, and people continue to feel that they can learn what's around the next corner by studying his quatrains. Nostradamus did not claim to have been born with the ability to see the future. He said that this gift came to him suddenly in his mid-40s, when he traveled southern Europe as a physician and chemist, fighting the plague. But just what? or who gave him the incredible ability to see the future was a mystery even to him. He was single-handedly fighting the plague and his wife and his two children died. He packed up his mule and literally in one night left everything and disappeared from the historical chronicles for about six years. The shock, the grief, the shattering of what had happened to him had awakened the family gift. He had an awakening experience that somehow opened up his psychic ability. It's quite possible that his brain itself was somehow altered. A switch was flipped, and when he came back, he had the ability to see into the future and to make prophecies. A psychic awakening? Is it possible that Nostradamus's ability to predict the future was somehow activated by the trauma he experienced? Many researchers of extrasensory abilities believe the human brain contains incredible potential that scientists have not yet discovered and which are sometimes switched on by traumatic events. Evidence of this can be found not only in the life of Nostradamus, but also extraordinary cases documented in modern times. Melbourne, 
last drill here. February 2012. 21-year-old college student Ben McMahon is driving home one afternoon when a semi-truck runs a red light and broadsides his car. The accident leaves McMahon in a coma. When he awakens a week later, McMahon shocks everyone by speaking in fluent Mandarin, a language he only casually studied in high school. Doctors say McMahon suffers from foreign language syndrome, a rare condition that occurs after a traumatic brain injury. There have been certain circumstances where people have had an injury of the brain and then suddenly develop some completely new uh, ability. It's a little bit like the savant phenomenon where somebody has just these unbelievable abilities in a given domain that are kind of unexplainable. The brain is a compilation of billions of nerve cells that work together to help us have our thoughts, feelings, and experiences. Almost everything is still mysterious about the brain. I mean, we understand the basics of how things work, but when it comes to our actual feelings, uh, our thought, our emotions, our consciousness, we really don't have a good answer as to how the brain helps us to have those different experiences. People who have suffered traumatic brain injuries have developed incredible skills, such as perfect recall, an advanced understanding of mathematical concepts, and the instantaneous mastery of musical instruments. But is it possible that the human brain contains even more incredible abilities just waiting to be unlocked? The untapped potentials of the brain are barely researched yet. Those researching creative people assume that most of the work that is done that is truly innovative, new, original, and valuable is done by the part of the brain we can't track, the part that is barely understood. The difference between the average human and the prophets and the seers is not that the prophets and seers have a different DNA. It is simply that they allow their extrasensory perception and their abilities to be enhanced. And that is the reason why they receive messages from the beyond. This speaks to the enormous hidden capacity of the brain and even opens up questions of whether or not our brain capacity is in the brain itself or maybe it's outside of the brain and somehow we're able to tap into these other abilities outside the brain. The human brain, unlike the brains of animals, contains a large neocortex, the region responsible for language, logical reasoning, and consciousness. Many believe it is also the seat of psychic abilities. In 2015, researchers in Germany determined that the human neocortex only developed after it was activated by a single gene. Around 200,000 years ago, say neuroscientists, our neocortex was mysteriously switched on. And nobody knows how. Of course, ancient astronaut theory says it's extraterrestrials, that beings came from elsewhere and tweaked our DNA. This is very important because it, within the neocortex, we now know our precognitive abilities, psychic abilities. If we're actually genetically engineered by extraterrestrials and they want us to have a certain kind of a brain, you have to wonder if ultimately what the goal is with extraterrestrials is to activate really all the humans on this planet so that we're using our brain power and our psychic abilities. Perhaps what the extraterrestrials did when they fashioned our DNA and activated our neocortex was cosmic consciousness, cosmic awareness, psychic abilities that could potentially link us to extraterrestrials. If human DNA was fashioned by extraterrestrials, as ancient astronaut theorists propose, is it possible that within it lie powerful extrasensory abilities? And have there been people who have been able to activate these talents, whether by accident, through practice, or by extraterrestrial intervention? Perhaps further clues can be found by examining not only claims of clairvoyance, but the incredible capability to move objects with the mind. Stay tuned for bonus footage when Ancient Aliens Declassified returns.
People think unusual circumstances means complicated taxes. But for a total tax life expert like me, it just makes things interesting. So, give us the ambitious new startup, the failed small business. All of your dependents and dependents. Dependents. Yes, give us your surprising inheritance, your odd injuries too, even your semi-nomadic life in a van. and special effects. We're gonna take this competition. We got this in the bag. And no way they're gonna beat this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all still can call this off. I ain't calling nothing off. One people, a new episode, Thursday at 9, only on the History Channel. Durham, North Carolina. 1935. Duke University parapsychologist Joseph Banks Ryan publishes a study that ignites a firestorm of controversy in the scientific community. Ryan claims the brain has psychic abilities he calls extrasensory perception or ESP. Parapsychology consists of five very distinct characteristics that we studied. One is telepathy, which is mind-to-mind communication. Clairvoyance, it's getting information about objects or events from a distance, whether it be something that be in a drawer in another room or even something halfway around the world. Precognition, which is getting information through time, usually from the future, but sometimes in the past. We also study psychokinesis, or mind-matter interaction. ESP is really just the ability, or at least evidence, of the ability to glean information in an extrasensory manner. So we're left with a question, how is this information being exchanged? a science perspective, there's a lot of controversy as to whether something like ESP exists. Is there some sensory process that our brain uh, is able to tap into? Uh, is our brain able to get to some more basic level of how the universe works and can pick up what other people are thinking or feeling? There are studies that purport to be able to show these kinds of phenomena as being real, and I think they need to be taken seriously. Working within the British Ministry of Defense, Nick Pope became aware that numerous world governments have devoted a significant amount of time and money to studying and even employing people claiming to have psychic abilities. In August 2019, he traveled to Durham, North Carolina to visit the Rhine Research Center. Hello. Hi, I'm John Fruit, the Executive Director of the Rhine. I'm Nick. Nice to meet you, Nick. Come on in with me. I have someone I'd like you to meet. Great, thank you. John has been developing a new method to detect and measure psychic abilities. Nick, this is Ed Edwards. Hi. Great to meet you. Good to meet you, Nick. Talk me through this. What are we, what are we looking at here, and um, what are you going to do, Ed? Okay, this equipment here, what it does is pick up the electrical energy I generate in my brain, and I'm able to control it. How do you do that? I mean, talk me through what you actually think. I can feel the different electrical sensations in my head that I consciously control. Like a tingling or? Yeah, tingling, magnetics, electrical sensations. And then out on my own, I've learned to generate these high energies in my hands. And for example, you know what neuropathy is in people? feet go numb and everything, I can apply this energy to that and the neuropathy will clear up in about four minutes in about eight out of 10 people. So it's like you're activating Correct. something. Ed talks about helping people to activate their immune systems, helping them to deal with physical problems. And I'm wondering what is the mechanism behind this healing? And that's what we're gonna be testing here, right? And this is something I can demonstrate that really most other people can. I'd love to see this. Okay, well let me turn it on. Okay, I'm gonna hold these two units right here and all they're doing is picking up the electrical energy in my body. 
So from a scientific perspective, this machine measures static electricity and static fields. Mm -hmm. And it is apparently generating static fields. So if I want that thing to go to the right, I pull on the right side of my brain. If I want it to go on the left, I pull it on the left side of my brain. You tell me when, I'll pull it back to the right. So if I was to say right, you would and left and right again. Without these controls, just to be clear, this doesn't move at all. If there's any ambient static fields in the area, it'll, it'll wiggle around a little yeah. bit. One of the things we thought is maybe it has to do with pressure he's exerting on it. As he increases pressure on one side, it moves one way or the other. But, as you can see, he can also have this effect without touching. Without touching it. I can hold it over there. I can pull so it back there. Mentally, I'm just changing polarity in my head, or I'm going from one side to the other. Removing any physical contact with the machine, Ed has just demonstrated something many would consider impossible. He moved the toggle using only the power of his mind. Sounds like you're at the real forefront of some cutting edge research here. Well, it's difficult to find people who are able to consistently have these sorts of effects. And the fact that Ed has consistent effects allows us to explore the phenomenon in a lot more detail. Now, at the UVA studies, they do the extensive EEG brain mapping on me. And what they've learned about my brain compared to all the other EEGs is just freaking them out up there. Uh, my brain is operating on all levels of consciousness all at the same time. Typically, the human brain generate specific brain waves while in different states of consciousness. But neuroscientists who have studied Ed's brain claim it is capable of generating all of these separate brain waves simultaneously. When it comes to the brain waves that our brain has, we have denoted them alpha waves, beta waves, theta waves, and so forth. Uh, these are essentially different frequencies. Certain types are associated with sleep patterns and things like that. But it's always been a little difficult to know exactly how to interpret all of the different types of brain waves that we have. An argument can be made that ESP or psychokinesis or precognition could be where the brain reaches a level that we are unfamiliar with. Not because it doesn't exist, but because the great majority of people have not learned how to harness that side of the brain. Is it possible that abilities like telepathy and psychokinesis are just waiting to be developed? If so, is ESP something that anyone can master? ESP is something that everyone has to some extent. Just like any other skill or talent you might have, whether it be a musical talent, whether it be a sports talent, everyone has a bit of natural abilities. But there are some people who practice really hard and they get better at it whether they have the natural ability or not. Everyone has the ability to develop their extrasensory perception. It is because it is part of our DNA. It is innate in the human nature to be able to tap into other realities beyond our normal human senses. Tap into other realities? Could it be that harnessing extrasensory abilities is the key to connecting with extraterrestrial beings? Perhaps further clues can be found by examining ancient stories of the Shining Ones. Stay tuned for bonus footage when Ancient Aliens Declassified returns. the Declaration of Independence and turns it into a nation's moral compass. The History Channel documentary event, Abraham Lincoln, Sunday, February 20th, only on the History Channel. New season, new mysteries. The Amityville Horror Haunting, the Jimmy Hoffa Disappearance, the Lindbergh Baby Kidnapping are closer than ever to being solved. New eyewitnesses are coming forward. I am the only person alive that knows where Jimmy Hoff is. The truth could finally be revealed. There's another killer out there. Is that who's tormenting the Lexus? And maybe it wasn't a haunting after all. History's Greatest Mysteries. New episodes Monday, February 28th, only on the History Channel. Who said you have to starve yourself to lose weight? Who said you can't do it? Who said only this is good and this is bad? 
I'm doing it my way. Meet Plenity, an FDA-cleared, clinically proven weight management aid for adults with a BMI of 25 to 40 when combined with diet and exercise. Plenity is not a drug. It's made from naturally derived building blocks and helps you feel fuller and eat less. It is a prescription-only treatment and is not for pregnant women or people allergic to its ingredients. Talk to your doctor or visit MyPlenity.com to learn more. This ring is a commitment. After we got married, I got very sick. He will come every day to help me walk again. And now I'm back. This is a reminder that love endures all. Celebrate your extraordinary love story. Save 20%. Jared, love brilliantly. The Chewy Box is coming today. Calm down, honey. We just ordered it yesterday. <gasps> Oven baked apple biscuits. Holy oh, Leroy. Biscuits! And fast, free one to three day shipping when they just can't wait. Chewy. with Wayfair, you spend less and get way more. So you can bring your vision to life and save in more ways than one. For small prices, you can build big dreams. Spend less, get way more. Shop everything home at Wayfair today. I'm Melanie. I'm a fun, caring, and goofy person. The doctor said I had a brain tumor, and it was scary, but you can't be sad. These kids, they don't deserve to have to go through this. My beautiful little redheaded girl has cancer. You don't know what's going to happen. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital works day after day to find cures and save the lives of children with cancer and other life-threatening diseases. Please call or go online right now and become a St. Jude Partner in Hope for only $19 a month. Families never receive a bill from St. Jude for treatment, travel, housing, or food because all a family should worry about is helping their child live. Her doctor came in and she just said, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. We're here to help her. When you call or go online with your credit or debit card right now, we'll send you this St. Jude t-shirt. The partners in hope, they mean everything because I'm just so grateful to have her. Hope is when you never, ever give up. Please become a partner in hope today. Three times the electrolytes and half the sugar. Pedialyte powder packs. Feel better fast. Durham, North Carolina. August 2019. Nick Pope is meeting with parapsychologist John J. Cruz to observe an experiment with Ed Edwards, a man who has demonstrated psychokinetic abilities. John has brought Ed and Nick to a dark room. Here, he intends to study Ed's abilities with a device that measures individual light particles called photons. We have a very sensitive piece of equipment here. It's called a photomultiplier tube. The photomultiplier tube will measure a single photon of ultraviolet light every half second. It's one of the most sensitive instruments for measuring light that exists. She is in standard physics experiments and laser technology. The reason we have that in here is because we're trying to measure light that comes from the human body. The human body naturally emits light. The average person emits 14 to 20 photons by centimeter square per second. This is very, very low. So today what we're going to do is we're going to have Ed just sit like he is right now, and we're going to take a baseline reading from him. Once we take a baseline from him, then I'm going to ask Ed to start doing the exercises that we were seeing downstairs to see if there's any change in our photon reading. In the control room, 
Nick and John will observe the experiment on computers that record the amount of light Ed produces in the dark room. So what are you actually hoping to observe here, and how will this tie in with ESP and parapsychology more generally? The emission of light, if it's being projected from him, would be a type of PK or psychokinesis. It may be a mechanism that might enable ESP. And how would this tie in with telepathy and clairvoyance? Well, when we're talking about light, we're talking about a formation carrier system. If you think about fiber optics, how the entire internet works, it's all done using light in different frequencies and different patterns. And this is what we're measuring in here. We're measuring light. So it's possible that the light being modulated can be what the carrier signal could be for the information being transferred in ESP. All right? About ready? Yes. Okay. Hey, Ed. All right, I'm going to turn the lights off so we can start to study. Okay. John kills the lights and begins the experiment. Ed is going to attempt to generate energy with his mind. But first, John will record a baseline measurement. Hey, you can see we're starting to take readings now. Typically, what would you expect to see in this experiment? So... What we typically see is we'll see a baseline which kind of wiggles around a little bit. It will usually be between 12 and 20 photons that we'll see it moving back and forth. If we get it to go beyond it to a point where it's two times the baseline or higher, uh -huh. then that's extremely significant. So that's what we're looking for. Okay. With their baseline readings complete, John starts the next phase of the experiment. Okay, Ed, you can start your sitting session. begins his process to generate energy and almost immediately the computer readings change oh look that one jumped up to 156 wow. now we're seeing 105 and you can see it's consistently at a higher level than it was during the baseline and this is what we look for right and we've had nothing on this scale nothing before, close to that before he started to produce something we just got a very big spike into the 500s oh, wow. the sudden change on the computer screen suggests something extraordinary that Ed can consciously manipulate energy with his mind. Up until this point, I think psychic talk was just that, it was talk. But even I can see that that is statistically significant. You don't need statistics to know that there's something unusual going on. Sure. In a second experiment, a thermographic camera monitors heat patterns on Ed's body and it detects an unexpected anomaly. Look on his palm with his hands. See, it seems to be getting warmer, and it does seem to be getting brighter near the top of his head too, doesn't it? Well, it does look as if the head, or dare I say it, the brain is heating up here. Could this be mental energy? It's possible some people talk about the same pattern on the forehead and on the hands as something we see in other healers. I came to the Ryan Research Center not really knowing what to expect. I've come away with a changed perspective. I've seen light associated with ESP. Light created by mental energy? John's experiment may show that the human brain has far more potential than previously thought. Could these abilities stem from an extraterrestrial origin? Curiously, across ancient cultures, there are stories of gods and holy figures emitting light. In Irish legend, we learn of the Tuatha de Dada, or the Tua de Dada. These are luminous humanoid beings who are considered to be beings of immense wisdom, who are also called the Shining Ones. Similar to the Shining Ones of the Celtic tradition, the ancient Sumerian gods called the Anunnaki are described as glowing. In Judeo-Christian traditions, when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the Ten Commandments, he too was described as glowing. Might this description be more than metaphorical? In a meditative state, you can actually increase the number of photons up to a thousand, two thousand, or even a hundred thousand photons per second, which is extremely bright. This tells us that when we are in a heightened state of awareness, in a higher state of consciousness, our bodies emit 
a huge amount of light. And perhaps that is the reason why we call it enlightenment. Is it possible that by reaching a state of enlightenment, one is able to connect with extraterrestrials? Opening the third eye is a poetic way of saying illumination or enlightenment. This is gaining access to some perception, some vision that is beyond ordinary experience. And this helps us with the tasks we have. This helps us with the challenges making plans. It is a kind of ordinary magic to grasp some information that is beyond everyday imagining. Extraterrestrials don't speak English or French or Chinese. They communicate with humans through telepathy. When you come in contact with an extraterrestrial, you're going to feel like they are reading your mind. And you'll be able to exchange information spontaneously through telepathy. Could it be that people who have activated a higher brain function in midlife make it possible for them to communicate with extraterrestrial beings? And if so, what are they trying to say? Perhaps further clues can be found by examining how psychic abilities have been utilized by the United States government. Stay tuned for bonus footage when... What was that? Sorry about that. It went overboard. I couldn't get it to stop. I can get part of it, maybe. Like a, a football on a side. Two eyes. It's got these sort of spindly legs. So I start backing up, and I'm starting to go, whoa, whoa, whoa. And it telepathically communicated with me. And they said, we are here to help you, and we want you to help us. John was not the only remote viewer on his team to have such an experience. Now, the other viewers started to experience the same thing. And so that's when we started to, okay, now, you know, I'm not hallucinating. It is not only remote viewers who have reported telepathic communication with other worldly beings. In the ancient world, priests and seers developed various methods to enter an altered state of consciousness to connect with their gods. In Ireland, Celtic shaman rhythmically banged on drums. The famous Greek seer, the Oracle of Delphi, would inhale a noxious gas and go into an ecstatic dance. Perhaps the most curious tale comes from ancient China where Taoist priests would practice a mystic dance ritual called the Pace of You. The Pace of You is a mediumistic trance that enables practitioners to escape the normal confines of uh, time and space and travel to the stars in order to communicate with the divine beings that inhabit them. And there, they would interact with various astral deities and stellar powers or stellar divinities in order to directly ask them for advice about future events. Astral deities with stellar powers? Might the priest have been communicating with extraterrestrials? With these uh, trance-like states, the whole idea is to really contact the gods and higher beings. And are you perhaps contacting extraterrestrials? In modern times, Powerful leaders from Winston Churchill to Ronald Reagan sought counsel from people with psychic abilities for all types of decisions. What leader wouldn't benefit from knowing what lies around the corner, whether it's good news or bad news? And perhaps have the opportunity to try to prevent something catastrophic from happening on their watch. 
So I think this is just a continuation of something that has been with us since the dawn of civilization. If psychics have been steering the highest affairs of a nation, might they be part of an extraterrestrial agenda to direct the course of life on Earth? But if so, how could otherworldly beings know the future? Perhaps clues can be found, not within the mind, but from far beyond our known universe. Stay tuned for bonus footage when Ancient Aliens Declassified returns. universe all the information past present and future exists all at once within this holographic universe your own past lives and future lives have already happened everything is contained there so with the ability to tap into the holographic universe you can see the past you could see the future and you would know what's going to happen next in Western cultures, where time is seen as a linear progress, the concept of a holographic universe may seem like science fiction. But numerous cultures, both ancient and modern, believe that time is cyclical and repeats itself on an endless loop. Buddhist and Hindu beliefs refer to this cycle as Kala Chakra. The notion of Kala Chakra refers to this idea that there is a synchronicity between various cycles in the universe. There is the large cosmic time cycle, which is then synchronized with other cycles that go from the rotation of planets all the way to seasons. So all of these cycles are interconnected in this great circular motion, which goes back to a circular notion of time. Many religious stories speak of a place outside of time. Perhaps one could travel outside of time and back into time later or earlier. It makes the concept of time travel workable. Time travel? A place outside of time? Could the concepts of past, present, and future only exist from a person's perspective? Moving through space and time. And if all moments in time are actually happening simultaneously, might the mind be able to see beyond a specific point in time in which it physically exists? Some ancient astronaut theorists believe that extraterrestrials designed the human brain with other, even more extraordinary, extrasensory abilities we have yet to discover. In the 1970s, this French philosopher by the name of Dr. Jean Charon proposed that each and every single particle that's in existence throughout the entire universe contains the entire knowledge of the universe. He called that the eternal spirit. And he said, and this is my favorite quote of the entire book, that the brain is the last untamed beast in the universe. Is it possible that the next step in human evolution depends not on our mastery of technology, but on the mastery of our own minds? Will our ascension into the stars come not through physics, but something more? We think that we need a machine to make us more intelligent, to make us more superior and enhance our ability. But you have access to certain powers and capabilities way beyond the machinery. The human brain has the ability to communicate with other beings, other dimensions and realities. Some people believe that the prophets and seers may have a hybrid extraterrestrial lineage. But I believe that everyone has this capability. The way to evolve is through consciousness. Consciousness is more powerful and more important than machinery and AI. Is it humanity's destiny to master psychic abilities that could put us in contact with other intelligent beings and lead to our ascension from Earth? 
there are some who believe that a man who harnessed these abilities centuries ago, Michel de Nostradamus, left a warning for future generations that this extrasensory evolution may be critical to the survival of humankind. Stay tuned for bonus footage when Ancient Aliens Declassified returns. From executive producer Doris Kearns Goodwin. Fellow citizens, we are not enemies. Though passion may have strayed, it must not break our bonds of affection. This nation shall have a new birth of freedom. The History Channel documentary event, Abraham Lincoln, Sunday, February 20th, only on the History Channel. Did you know that the modern calculator is over 350 times faster than the computers on the Apollo 11 space mission? Or that the world's fastest train is also the quietest? Magnets reduce friction so that the train can go really fast. Welcome to a world of innovation on Modern Marvels. New episodes starting Wednesday, February 16th at 9 on the History Channel. Getting the incredible iPhone 13 without T-Mobile makes as much sense as playing hide and seek. Ready or not, here I come! In the desert. Really, guys? Because T-Mobile has more 5G bars in more places than anyone. And now, when you switch, you can get iPhone 13 on us on every plan. You're not going to fit in that hole. Don't look any further. Unlock the full power of iPhone 13 on us at T-Mobile, the network with more 5G bars in more places. You put the sandwich in the dip. Brisket, bacon, beef, and Swiss. You put the sandwich in the dip. Brisket, bacon, beef, and Swiss. You put the sandwich in the dip. Brisket, bacon, beef, and Swiss. You put the Arby's, we have the meat. Did you know you can save money on your prescriptions? GoToRx is the free app that gets you discounts at your local pharmacy. I use GoToRx at Walmart. I use it at Kroger. We're a Rite Aid family. Before you top off your prescription, just check the app. To save on your prescriptions, check GoToRx. They cover items no matter their age. worthwhile place to put your money when it comes to childhood cancer. If it weren't for St. Jude, I wouldn't be sitting here today. If it weren't for St. Jude, a lot of kids wouldn't be with their families every day. Let's come together to help the children of St. Jude fight childhood cancer. Visit this website, call this number, or scan the QR code with your $19 monthly donation. Join with your debit or credit card right now, and we'll send you this St. Jude t-shirt you can proudly wear to show your support. Today, you can help St. Jude save lives. It takes a heart for somebody to say, I have this extra that I'm willing to give to St. Jude so that they can help save more lives. Make your monthly donation today to help end childhood cancer everywhere. For the line crew, and the go-getters for shoulders to lean on and backs that don't break for everyday heroes keeping doors open lights on and gears turning there's Granger. supplies and solutions for every industry plus 24 7 support and over 250 local branches call clickranger.com or just stop by Granger for the ones who get it done your vehicle protected this winter with WeatherTech. Laser measured floor liners protect the carpet. Seat protectors to keep seats safe from spills and messes. And cup foam keeps your phone secure while allowing easy access while charging. WeatherTech's got your vehicle covered all season long. Order your American-made products at WeatherTech.com. This ring is a commitment. After we got married, I got very sick. He will come every day to help me walk again. And now I'm back. This is a reminder that love endures all. Celebrate your extraordinary love story. Save 20%. Jared, love brilliantly. July 23rd, 2012. A solar flare erupts from a powerful storm on the surface of the sun and hurdles towards Earth. Due to the tilt of the planet on this particular day, we barely miss bombardment by the apocalyptic flame. Had it happened one week earlier, 
humans would have faced a global catastrophe. Now, scientists say it could happen again. And next time, a solar flare could strike a fatal blow. Remarkably, over five centuries ago, Michel de Nostradamus made a prediction about the end of life on Earth that to many sounds eerily similar to the potential effects of a solar flare. Nostradamus has made one of the farthest future dated prophecies in history. The fire sears and dries out and destroys and desiccates the surface of the Earth, destroying all life on the surface. But then he gives some hope, he says, but the races of humanity will go on. And then he makes a statement that he never has made in any of his utterances. He starts using astrological identifications for places in space as locations. And he says, some will go to Aquarius for a few years. Others will go to the constellation of Cancer. It's a hint of a man from the 16th century trying to grasp the concept of the galactic stage of human civilization. The idea that somebody from uh, around 500 years ago said that we'll have to leave planet Earth in order to live elsewhere to continue life, that's incredibly fascinating because what does a man from 500 years ago know about leaving planet Earth? Could Nostradamus have been warned about a future catastrophe by other worldly beings? And might they be shepherding humanity until we unlock the full potential of our brain and become shiny ones like them? Other extraterrestrial civilizations are going to focus on consciousness, on making their bodies into light. When you become a light body, you have access to certain powers and capabilities way beyond the machinery. Humanity is evolving. We are advancing our consciousness and it is consciousness that directs your thoughts. It is consciousness that can manage your body. And consciousness has the ability to communicate directly with machinery. Anything that contains artificial intelligence. There have been a number of studies that have shown that consciousness seems to be able to go beyond just what is in the human brain. And that is something that I think all of us need to think about. What the future holds remains to be seen, but one argument is that the development of psychic abilities is going to be the next step of human evolution. That unlocking these abilities that perhaps lie dormant within all of us is going to be key to upgrading humanity to the next level. It seems quite possible that as we evolve, our psychic abilities will